listening, y'all. Uh, been a pretty good week for the old Chasing Tracks team. Corbin and Sean, they was at it this week. They dropped a pretty good little seven point. Old Corbin, he's a he's a stud, I'm telling you. He, I keep saying he's young, but he's he's an old soul when it comes to climbing trees and shooting deer. I promise you. But uh, me and Mark managed to drop a pretty good nine point this week. Uh, you know, we stuck to our guns. We we stayed out of our best spots. There's there's good spots, better spots best spots so we went to one of our better spots uh, sometimes the situation allows you to do that kind of thing uh, here in this in this part of the year we've had a lingering heat wave that is usually the first couple few days of season somewhere in there you'll get an evening or two you know where the temperature gets down there it's just been hot it's just been hot uh, it's probably one of the longest stretches I've seen with bow season coming in that you didn't have at least one evening in there where it didn't get down to the 50s or 40s where, you know, even the 60s. I mean, it was it was upper 70s, 80s every night. It was hot. But uh, it, it had been in the 80s every night, and it, it dropped down. We had a 30, I think 32 or 33 degree drop there at the house. And uh, we had a spot. Oh, it's on the river. I can leave from my house on the ranger and get to it. Uh, it's, I'll tell you what, it's below Big Springs and above Chilton, somewhere in there. That's, that's as close as I'm gonna get you. But uh, it was not on the farm, but it was, a, it was a good spot. And I'd been running trail cameras in there for a while. We've been watching a few good deer in there. <clears throat> uh, there was a, a bigger 10 in there, and then that nine, and uh, one other pretty decent buck. But does does everywhere and we'd actually set out with the intention uh, of poking a doe but with the uh, thought in the back of our mind one of those bucks may slip up and come through there so when it just happened to work out so you got to prioritize your spots and uh, save those best save those best ones for the rut you know that killing a buck like that in September is not gonna happen every year I don't care who you are it's just it's tough and uh, stars lined with this cold front the wind pushed in the right direction and acorns were falling it just all happened right but uh, you know that being said I'll give you fair warning you know you go and mess around and you kill you a couple good deer you're gonna see some you're gonna lose some friends guys I mean uh, you know that's bad to say but it's 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 bad to deal with I don't I'll be the first one to shake somebody's hand whenever they kill a good one, but I can't tell you how many people have had to turn their nose up at me this week, and let alone the last couple of years, and that's fine. I mean, that just shows who they really are. Uh, I've seen guys get horn envy so bad that it, they just turn straight into spotlighters and, 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 you know, truck hunters. You know, they just figure, well, everybody else is killing them, they're gonna do whatever they have to, you know, it's owed to them. I'm gonna tell you right now, if you shoot one out of the truck window, you have not impressed anybody. Any five-year-old can shoot one out of the truck window. Uh, whether it's with a light on it or in the daylight, either way, you ain't done nothing. You ain't outsmarted a thing. And uh, if you got one hanging on the wall that you shot under a light or shot out of the truck window, you might as well put it in the closet. Because, you know, you've, you've done nothing. That's just my opinion. Trespassing is just as bad. You got some, some guys out there that work hard year-round. <laughs> they, uh, they manage their deer. That's a lot of time and a lot of money, and people just can't stay. They, they can't take it. They want to go to the river and play all week, or you know, sit in the air conditioning all summer, and then they want to go in there and hop the fence line, and kill your turkey and deer. Uh, they call yourself your friend, and then they drive around the backside of your place and come to step it in. You know, screw up some of your hunting on one side. Well, that's just as bad as poaching. I mean, I, you know, well, don't don't be that guy, fellas and ladies. Don't be that guy. You know, be proud. We're all fellow hunters, and I'm gonna tell you right now, your hunting rights are in as much jeopardy right now as they ever have been. Uh, this election, I'm not gonna get into politics. I'm just saying that they're coming for your guns, and uh, once they get your guns, they're gonna come for your bows and all your hunting rights. As a trapper, uh, I've been out of the game for a while till last year. I got back into trapping uh, years ago. I trapped, loved it. I wish I never would have quit. Now that I got back into it, I, I really, I really think that I've learned more about deer movement and deer hunting. From my trapping as I have anything, but uh, we need everybody to stick together as much as we can. You know, a lot of guys are, are down on the crossbow thing. I'm gonna hold my opinion to myself on that. Uh, 
all I'm saying is at least maybe some of those people that have never, you know, hit the woods before that think it'd be cool to kill them with a crossbow, maybe they'll help stick up for your hunting rights now. So maybe you need to look at the glass half full kind of thing. So, but anyway, we're rolling into October. October lulls on the way. So uh, this is the time. A lot of guys get antsy. Logan can't stay out of their best spots. Uh, you know, those spots usually ain't set up for regular movement anyway. Those spots are usually set up for cruising movement or uh, breeding movement. You know, they're a little off the, uh, the main path. But some guys like to sneak in there and get an early glimpse. Uh, you know, this is the month that you need to let them air out, big time. The movement's gonna be slower. These deer know that they're being hunted and being pressured now. They're gonna move late and move at night. So until they, uh, until they start to become reactive to calling, until they start to really start making some sign, and you start getting a few does, getting that over the shoulder nervous look, stay out of them guys, I'm telling you. If you will just have the discipline to stay out of them these next three weeks or so, probably three and a half, you will be amazed when you go back in there what's going on, I can promise you. So just, just, just hold tight, hold tight, we about got her whooped. So anyway, I think, I want to thank everybody for your support this week and the thank yous and the texts and the high fives and whatnot. Uh, I just, I can't, I can't even express, you know, just how cool it is just to just be able to do this and that you guys uh, love being a part of it too. So, thank you and, uh, you know, Logan, didn't mean, to didn't mean to bust you out, but you need it. So, all right, y'all, see you.